What's happening my Jacked family? Coach Scott here, jackedafter40.com. Today's video we're going to talk about how to fail-proof your diet. And first we need to take a look at why we consider a diet to be a failure in the first place. And oftentimes it really comes down to us not being able to stick to the diet's rigid rules. So then we have to ask ourselves, why can't we stick with the diet? And an even better question to ask yourself is, is it really us that failed the diet or did the diet fail us? Now I'm definitely no stranger to failing on my diet. So I'm going to share some of my personal experiences from my years of dieting to show you how I have learned to fail-proof my diet so you can do the same yourself. If you're not familiar with my background story, in my mid-20s, my life was crazy freaking hectic and I was making poor nutrition decisions. I ended up gaining nearly 50 pounds of excess fat. Then right around the age of 30, that's when I started really kind of trying to diet that excess fat off and I struggled for five years up and down. I'd be good for a few days, then fall off the wagon. Good for a few more days, fall off the wagon, and here's exactly what happened. I'd open up the cupboard either to grab some oats or rice cakes, and I'd see a box of cookies staring right at me. I freaking love cookies. Now, some would say that if cookies are a weakness of mine, I shouldn't keep them in the house, but I have kids, and they love cookies, and just because I'm dieting doesn't mean that they should have to suffer as well. And some would say, well, you should hide those cookies so you can't see them, and only your, your family knows, but you know, I've tried that myself personally, and if I know they're in the house, I'm gonna go looking for them. And I am going to find them. If I, I will be on a mission to get them. So I'd see that box of cookies in the cupboard and my willpower would go out the window. I'd end up having a cookie, thinking I'll just stop at one cookie. Then I start thinking to myself, you know what, I've been really good for a few days. I can have three cookies. Next thing you know, three turns into four. And then I start thinking, ah, fuck it. Yeah, I screwed up my diet, I failed. I might as well just go all out right now, eat this whole box of cookies, get it done and over with, and then start my diet over again tomorrow. And I repeated that cycle over and over again for years. Sometimes I'd be good for a week, sometimes for two weeks, but that whole idea of trying to be restricted, trying to avoid all these junk foods, treat foods, and trying to be as, as good on my diet, a healthy diet as possible, uh, would always lead to a, a binge like that and starting the process all all over again. If you can relate to that experience, drop a comment down below and smash that thumbs up button for me. And how I turned things around is that I had to change the narrative. Instead of trying to focus on eating nothing but clean, natural foods and really dieting to be healthy, I gave myself permission to have cookies whenever I wanted them, as long as they fit my caloric target for the day. And what ended up happening is that because I knew I was allowed to have cookies, if I wanted some, I would have some, and I'd make that adjustment with the foods I was eating the rest of the day so I could still hit my caloric target. It just meant that I had to make some sacrifices. Like at dinner time, I could have had some healthier options there that I would normally have, but I had to reduce some of those healthier options in order to make room for the calories that came from the cookies. But what I found was that because I had permission to eat those cookies whenever I wanted, it wasn't, I wasn't like obsessing over them. It wasn't this, this, I wasn't depriving myself for days and days and days and all, my, all of a sudden you just, you let the animal out of the cage and you pig out like crazy. It just, no, if you want one now, I can have some now. And you don't feel like because you're eating them right now, you have to get as many in you as you can because you're not gonna be able to have them uh, for more days to come until your cheat day or anything. It's like, no. I can have two now and I can stop there because I know I can have two or three tomorrow if I wanted. You're, just, you're less likely to binge when you're not depriving yourself. You're not in that deprivation mindset. And the best part about that approach is that if I had a cookie, I didn't feel like a failure because it was a part of the plan. I was allowed to have it as long as I hit my caloric target for the day. So I could still have three, four cookies. If I hit my caloric target, I am still taking steps towards getting shredded after 40 and achieving my physique and health goals. Another example is from the 12-week cutting phase that I went through nearly four years ago. That was the last time I've ever had to go through a 12-week cutting phase. I got lean, stayed lean, every Ever since then and as I was beginning that cutting phase I knew that every Friday night I was going out with the guys there was gonna be tons of food around and definitely a lot of alcohol and in the past when I had tried to avoid all that stuff going out with the guys and trying to be good uh, and try to like just drink water or just drink some some diet pop or like Coke Zero Pepsi Max something like that and maybe just snack on some celery sticks or something like that it never worked I caved each and every time the temptations were just too much 
much for me to resist. So rather than try to resist it during that cutting phase, I gave myself permission to let loose on that evening. That was going to be my cheat day, my, my refeed day. And it just meant that I had to be extra diligent with my nutrition the rest of the week. I had to create a larger caloric deficit throughout the week to kind of accommodate for that situation. And it worked. It worked wonders. I was able to enjoy myself, live my life to the fullest. I had lots of little snacks and treats throughout the week and still hit my, my aggressive caloric deficit during the week and then really had that big cheat day on the, the Friday evening. And since then, after that experience, I evolved from that to the point where I could go on those cheat days, those Friday nights with the guys and everything, and not have to completely pig out, not eat in a calorie surplus. I could eat to the point just by maintenance level calories, enjoying all of the foods, but enjoying those foods in moderation. And that worked wonders because the rest of the week, I could eat at my maintenance level calories or in a gentle surplus and not have to worry about um, having to make up for the damage that I did on that cheat day or that refeed day. It's important for you to know that your diet is an evolution. You're always going to be learning and growing from your nutrition experiences. I have tried countless diets in the past uh, and they all got me to this point where I'm at today. Yeah, I experienced some failures with some and some just didn't gel with me. Um, I, In the beginning years, beginning days of, of dieting, uh, I did a lot of carb cycling, calorie cycling, and I would find that, yeah, it, it was like you're uh, three days on, low calories, and one day high calories. So what would happen is I'd be out with friends and, and family at a gathering and, and it'd be a great opportunity to enjoy a little extra food, but I had just had my high calorie day the day before. So I can, this is a low calorie day. I have to be on this low calorie day um, in order to stick with this plan, this plan's rigid diet rules. And since then realized that, you know what? If I knew ahead of time that the that my family gathering was going to be after, uh, like on, the, on that fourth day or fifth day, I should say, uh, I could have ended up doing like four days of low calories instead of three, and then on the fifth day, have that refeed day. It's not like it's gonna throw things all off all that much if you have your, your higher calorie day, your refeed day, or more carb, higher carb day, uh, one day later than, than what is in that plan. And I've also followed various forms of intermittent fasting, whether it's, um, timed eating windows where uh, you have an eight hour window of eating and 16 hours where you're fasting or where you have a complete 24 hour fast or even 36 hour fast. And I was able to stick with those diets. Those diets worked, but they didn't feel natural to me. It wasn't a, a lifestyle. Like I, in every instance, I followed it for about six weeks. Um, it's not something I saw myself continuing to follow for years to come. It just didn't feel natural to me. So I abandoned those approaches, even though they worked, and I wouldn't necessarily say I failed on those diets, but those diets would fail me in the sense that it wasn't it wasn't true to me. It wasn't true to my lifestyle. It just, it didn't make me feel my best, perform my best, and just, yeah, like I said, just didn't feel natural to me. The approach I follow today, the approach I've been following for the past several years is more of a, uh, I guess you consider a flexible dieting approach where I have a caloric target that I'm aiming for, but I can work in all of my favorite foods, the, the whole nutrient rich foods, as well as my favorite treat foods and, and junk food if you wanna call it, or cheap meals if you wanna call it that. Uh, fit that all into my diet plan and fit it in whenever. There's no no time where I, I I have to have my treat today because it's my cheat day today. I can, I can have whatever I want any single day uh, as long as I hit my caloric target for that day. So that's been, I, I like to think of that more as like nutritional freedom. Whereas like a lot of the diets out there have the rigid rules for you to follow. I guess the one rule that I have to follow is to I'm just trying to hit a caloric target that I am aiming for. And, and I just, again, I, I'm focused on health, I'm focused on performance, I'm focused on feeling my best, um, performing my best, just, just living my life to the fullest. So a lot of that really comes down to, I know that eating whole natural nutrient rich foods is gonna support that lifestyle for the most part, but I also enjoy my treat foods as well and working them in there make me feel good. They kind of, they do lift my spirits, but they only do that if I eat it in moderation. I find when I eat those junk foods, treat foods, cheap meals in 
excess, I feel sluggish, I feel bloated, I feel uncomfortable, I get acid reflux, I don't sleep well, I don't perform well during my workout. So I, it really comes down to a heightened sense of awareness as well into how your body responds to certain foods. And once again, this is an evolution. Like this has been years of dieting for me uh, to get to this point where I am able to I've learned to eat to that point of satisfaction that I don't need to eat in excess, even though a gentle surplus I'm current consu currently consuming in this muscle building phase would be considered an excess. It's not like super excess where I'm gonna be packing on tons of weight and it's not a, a healthy lifestyle. It's just really listening to my body. It is um, really living in the moment savoring each and every bite, enjoying each meal to the fullest rather than trying to shovel food in my mouth as fast as I can because it's a cheat day and because I don't know the next time I'm gonna be able to have this. I'm gonna to have to wait a week to have this meal again. It's no, I can have this food again tomorrow. So I'm gonna savor it right now. If I want it tomorrow, I'll have it tomorrow. If I don't, I don't. It's just, it's nutritional freedom. Just making sure you're being responsible with the foods that you're eating. And once again, because I can include all of my favorite foods whenever I want, when I eat those foods, I don't feel guilty. I don't beat myself up. I don't feel like I failed my diet because they are all a part of my diet. What matters most is that I hit my caloric target for the day. There are no for forbidden foods, as I mentioned in a recent video. There are, not, oh, there are no foods I'm trying to avoid. I am going to work in every one of my favorite foods whenever I desire. And, and that just, it's to me, that's the path to, to joy in this overall journey. And even when you adopt this flexible dieting approach and you get really good at eating to that point of satisfaction and really listening to your hunger cues and really savoring every bite, you're still gonna have days where you eat in excess, you kind of lose your shit. Sometimes it happens because of stress and maybe lack of sleep, maybe dehydration. There's certain things that can impact your appetite. And for some, there's gonna be some times where you just have no rhyme or reason. You're like, I just, I just could not stop eating. Uh, I was out of control. It happens to us as long as it's only once in a while. Uh, again, don't beat yourself up. That's not a failure. That's life. It happens. It's no big deal. You can easily get right back on track the following day. You don't have to do any punishment cardio. You don't have to starve yourself and fast the following day. Just You're naturally going to eat a little bit less. You're going to be full after that epic day of cheating. Uh, and uh, so your appetite's going to be a little bit lower the following day. So you're naturally going to eat less, maybe even a little bit less the following day. It all works itself out in the wash, as they say. Um, so it's not a failure. It is, it's, it is just life in those situations and realize that you are human. It happens to the best of us. It happens to me as much as I uh, I have never been better with my nutrition. Um, it still happens to me from time to time and that's okay, we're human. So the way to fail proof your diet is to not have so many rigid rules, to be more flexible, to not have forbidden foods in your diet. So when you eat these foods, you don't feel like you are a failure. And when you do experience a slip up, realizing that, hey, it's all part of the process, it happens to us, you, you don't view it as a failure, just view it as a, all right, it, it happened, it is what it is, Gonna move on to the next day and just continue to be better. Learn from the experiences and move on. Just as I learned from my experiences of having the, the bigger cheat days out with the guys on the Friday night to realizing that, you know what? Yeah, I can make that work. I can lose weight by having a bigger cheat day like that and eating less all throughout the week. Uh, but I find I don't feel as well when I have those big cheat days. I, like I said, I feel full, bloated, just gross. I don't sleep as well. Uh, whereas I've just, enjoy some of those foods in moderation and eat up to about my maintenance level calories, I feel better. I enjoyed all those delicious foods. I don't feel deprived. It, it nourished me. It satisfied my taste buds and I still feel great. I don't feel full and bloated and stuffed and I'm going to have a great sleep tonight and just carry on with my day tomorrow. So that is the best way to fail proof your diet when you look at these, everything as a learning experience, not as a failure, and you just have nothing that is forbidden in your diet. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. If you know a fellow bro who would benefit from watching today's video, do them a favor and share it with them. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that alert button so you're notified each time I upload a video. More than anything, I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section below. Share your thoughts, share your insights, share your feedback on today's video. And before you go, don't forget to download your free guide, Jacked After 40. Have yourself an amazing day. I'll catch you in the next video.